Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is a puzzle game that was originally released in 2015 for the Wii U. At the time, both Barjo and Hex scored at 4 out of 5 rubber chickens. Now it's just been re-released for the Switch and 3DS with a new lick of paint and some brand new levels. I've been having a ton of fun experiencing it for the first time, so I'm going to show you one of these new levels set in New Donk City. Let's go track some treasure! So I'm here in New Donk City and you'll notice I have a cool pointer on my screen. That's because I'm not playing in handheld mode so I don't have the touch screen. Instead, I've got my controller to use as my virtual finger, which is pretty cool. I'm going to go into this pipe here and launch myself into the city. Here we go. And it's already action-packed. Uh, so it's going to try and throw things at me, but I think there's some hidden coins over here. Love to collect some coins. And the cool thing about this puzzle game is that you can rotate the world so that you can get different perspectives and see where you're going. For example, I go into this building and I can't see myself anymore. I can swing it around and, oh, there he is at the back. You also can't jump in this game, so everything has to be done by carefully falling in the right spot like I just did there on that beam, or getting things to join up so that you can walk across them. So normally in the main game, you would be looking for a power star to enter the level, but because this is based on Super Mario Odyssey, we actually have a little moon over here from that game to get. So I have to figure out how to get into this area that I can't just jump over the wall. And it's probably gonna involve walking up some of these beams. Oh, hello. So you can also collect these gems, which is kind of like an extra objective in each level. There's three of them in each level, and there's also a hidden objective sometimes. Uh, but you don't find out what that is till you've completed the level at least once. So whilst it's not really a platformer, it's definitely more of a puzzler. There's still some kind of action elements to it. You've still got to use a bit of careful timing. Actually, I'm going to go that way. So you can see that there's a gap between that beam and where I'm standing on this, so I actually can't go there. So I reckon if I run across here fast enough, yeah, cool. So I use that beam as a ramp and up I go. And let's rotate around to get this angle right. Come through here. And I wonder if this beam's gonna tilt as well. Yeah, it will. So you do have limited lives. As you can see up in the top, I have one left. Uh, you can sometimes collect more lives in the map. Um, sometimes they'll be hidden but there's not a lot of penalty if you actually do lose all your lives, you just start again. So I'm back on the beam where I fell last time and you can also use this cool zoom feature to get in a little bit closer because Toadie's a pretty little guy. Um, and so it helps to just be able to see what you're doing a little better. And now, this is where the puzzling comes in. So I can see that there's coins over there, but I don't know how to get there. And remember, you can't jump. So I need to extend a platform or bring up a platform to be able to reach those coins. I also see a pipe up there, and those pipes bring you to new areas. This is a touch object. And I'm gonna touch it, and it's a manhole, and I'm gonna go down it. Hey! hey! Oh, this is cool. It's a whole new basement level. So you have to run away from the piranha plants. There's a lot of timing in the game to make sure that you can get past all the obstacles. And I'm not sure I'm going fast enough, but I'm going to try. Here we go. All right. I'm hoping there's a turnip in here as well from these little plants that I can pull that give me goodies, but nothing but coins. I really want that gem as well, but I don't know how I'm going to get over there. This level is tricky. Maybe I can spin those platforms. So I pull this lever and things around here have changed. Okay, now everything's in motion, which is great news for me because I need to get up on those platforms. So I can also use my uh, touch finger to boop these guys so that they don't bug me. So the game's obviously very cute and it looks fairly simple, but there's some really tricky puzzles to try and figure out from time to time, especially if you want to get everything. I have been having a really great time trying to get all the objectives, but there's some really tricky ones that I'm completely stuck on. So it seems like they've upped the difficulty for the new levels because this one is quite hard. Okay, so everything's moving now. This makes it interesting. 
I'm gonna jump over here. And I could finish the level right here. So I don't need to get every single objective and walk straight up and get the moon. And that would be level done. But if you want to go back and you want to find those special things, for example, there was a golden mushroom up the top that I have no idea how to reach yet, you can definitely do that. And we see now that I've completed the level once, there's an option for an extra objective, which is defeated all the enemies. So you can jump back in and try and get that. And if you do, you get a little crown stamp on the page for the level. Well, that's Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. It's a really cool little game. Some of the puzzles are really difficult, but it's still accessible because most of the time you can at least finish the level, if not get every objective. I love puzzle games and I'm really enjoying this. I like how it has quite a lot of challenge under the surface, but it's still accessible for kids. And I think that Nintendo are definitely at their best when they find that balance. There's a lot here to see and do. It's really creative puzzle design. And I just noticed this crazy looking chicken, so I'm gonna see what's up with that.